Case 19. Coming into focus. Um, but this one's so classic, even with the blurriness, you can um, form a differential. So it looks like we've got these cross sections of what I imagine would be a very fleshy, pedunculated papule clinically. Um, we do have areas of some more compact stratum corneum, acanthosis. And then um, when you do go closer, you start seeing areas that have more of the rounded perikeratosis and some coarse hypergranulosis. So that all supports more of like a condyloma. Um, but Good. it also can be very like bloodline papulosis in the differential. I would want to look for atypia. Yeah, right. That's good to think of uh, whenever you see a condyloma, always think about could there be um, higher grade atypia or what we would now call uh, H cell high, high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, which has a few forms, Bowen's disease or squamous situ. And I kind of lump Bowenoid papulosis under that category of H cell. Personally, that's my view. Uh, it's kind of a somewhat controversial terminology nowadays, but uh, in any case, uh, yes, uh, I think this area from low power, you could definitely think of a large uh, separate keratosis would be the one other big differential I'd have, depending on where it was from. This is quite polypoid, and if this it looks like this and it's from the anogenital area, almost it's condylomatal proven otherwise. Um, if it has this, you know, such a papillomatous uh, warty uh, shape. I think the areas that, you know, if you just had that though, that looks a lot like a separate keratosis to me. And uh, sometimes, especially like in the other fold sets of the axilla, I, I've seen separate keratoses plenty of times that looked like this. But the things that really help me, aside from the site uh, and clinical impression, is areas like this where you get kind of a more knuckled, rounded and smoothed, rounded papillomatosis rather than the, the pointed finger-shaped papillomatosis of a conventional verruca, a regular wart, verruca vulgaris. This is a, a genital wart, condyloma cuminatum, tends to have these more rounded uh, areas. And then in these areas, you'll often see, like you said, perikeratosis that's kind of coming off of rounded cells, um, the, uh, which also gives you that, that viral feel like you'd see these little tufts of para like you'd see in a regular wart. And then also the best thing to me is I want to find coilocytes. I, you do not need coilocytes for a regular Veruca vulgaris, and not all condylomas have them, but if I have any doubt, I really like to see coilocytes in a condyloma just because it can be a stigmatizing diagnosis because it's a sexually transmitted infection and can, can sometimes create significant social issues to diagnose condyloma, you know, maybe in a monogamous, you know, relationship where the person, um, you know, has not had a previous history of that, you know, so I do try to be mindful of that, even though it is uh, not a malignant disease, it is a disease that can come with a significant amount of, of, of social uh, stigma and can potentially cause problems. You never know the life situation of a patient. So I feel like I really try to be, you know, as, as, you know, objective as I can with these. And I really want to see good coilocytes, or if not, you can use, um, uh, you can use incito hybridization for HPV if there's a doubt. And then also, like I said, or like you brought up, I do look for atypia here, but those are nice coilocytes. They are large nuclei, pale nuclei, pale cytoplasm and in the upper stratum corneum or granular layer, <clears throat> usually near the areas where the parakeratosis is coming from. I don't care about just little vacuolated keratinocytes. I want to see big nuclei with pale cytoplasm. All right, that's what I want for a good, um, a good example of HPV viral effect. Like right, right there. Well, we saw it already. We don't have time to wait for it to focus. And again, I've got a Veruca video that has more uh, uh, examples of like perfect coilocytes. Condyloma cuminata.